Well, tomorrow is the start of the Synod on Synodality at the Vatican. Yet in the lead up to this very private gathering, an exchange between five cardinals and the Pope is being made very public. Back in July, Cardinals Walter Brandmuller from Germany, Robert Serra from Guinea, Juan Sandoval Inegues from Mexico, Raymond Burke from the United States, and Joseph Zen from Hong Kong submitted questions called dubia to Pope Francis. They were seeking clarity on several controversial issues, including changing church teaching, blessings for same-sex couples, the authority of the synod, women's ordination, as well as repentance and absolution. Yesterday, the Cardinals published their original questions and follow-ups, seeking additional clarity. In return, the Vatican released Pope Francis's initial response to the first set of questions. And joining us now is Jonathan Liedel, senior editor of the National Catholic Register. Jonathan, great to see you again. Okay, first off, could you please explain to us um, what are dubia? Yeah, Tracy. So dubia comes from a Latin word that means doubts or questions. So submitting dubia to the Vatican is a way for church leaders to seek clarity on matters of doctrine and discipline uh, that have been called into question in some way. So typically dubia are submitted in question format, giving an opportunity for the Vatican to respond uh, with a simple yes or no. And the Vatican can choose to reply, and if it does reply, whether or not it will publish the dubia and its responses to the wider public. And Jonathan, um, if the original questions, if they were submitted in July and answered by the Pope, why did the Cardinals publish the questions now? That's right. When the Cardinals received the Pope's initial, initial responses back on July 11th, uh, they said that uh, their dubia were not answered in that typical yes or no fashion. And in fact, they went on to say that the Pope's answers, quote, have not resolved the doubts we have raised, but have, if anything, deepened them. So they revised their questions to the Pope to make them more explicit and to elicit uh, th those yes-no direct responses they were looking for. They submitted those revised dubia to the Pope on August 21st. But after they received no response from the Holy Father, they decided to go public with those dubia yesterday morning. And of course, Tracy, uh, to keep in mind, the whole reason the Cardinal submitted these dubia in the first place was to try to bring clarity to the Church's teaching, quote, in view of various declarations of highly placed prelates who have spoken about using the upcoming synod on synodality to promote views that the cardinals say are openly contrary to the constant doctrine and discipline of the Church. So really an attempt to have some clarity before we begin this important synod on synodality. And Jonathan, what's the Vatican's response? Well, Tracy, yesterday, only hours after the cardinals went public with their dubia, the Vatican released the Pope's uh, responses to their original questions. Additionally, Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, who is the new head of the Vatican's doctrine office, he criticized these five cardinals. He said that the Pope had already answered their questions and that they were treating the Holy Father as if he were, quote, their slave for running errands. So some very charged words uh, from the Vatican. And what about uh, Pope Francis's response? I mean, how significant was it? Well, Tracy, anytime you're talking about some of these hot and button issues, there's likely uh, the potential for controversy. I would say that the reason the Pope's responses have generated some controversy is because they don't necessarily provide those clear answers the cardinals were looking for on some of these questions. And that's allowed for a variety of different interpretations. So we can see this uh, perhaps especially with the Holy Father's response to the question of whether the Church can bless same-sex unions. Now, in his response, the Pope reaffirmed, or excuse me, reaffirmed that marriage is an exclusive, stable, and indissoluble union between a man and a woman. And he also said that the Church can't do anything that would cause confusion about uh, the meaning of marriage. However, the Pope, in that response to that question, he went on to say that pastoral prudence, and this is a quote, must adequately discern whether there are forms of blessing requested by one or more persons that do not transmit a mistaken conception of marriage. For when a blessing is requested, one is expressing a request for help from God. 
So this passage from the Pope, it has been interpreted in different ways uh, by, by different people. The secular media, for instance, have said that uh, this indicates that the Pope is open uh, to the Church blessing same-sex sexual unions. Others, though, uh, citing the Pope's previous comments and perhaps especially the Vatican's 2021 guidance on this issue can test that account. Jonathan, thank you so much for that report and sorting this all out for us. We appreciate it. God bless.